Hey, it's Neil from EA Media. And I'm here because I want to talk about a number of the different data breaches that have been going on with regards to Amazon Web Services. Before I get into that, I just want to remind everybody to subscribe to the EA Media YouTube channel. That way we can grow the community around EA Media. Okay, now on to the Amazon Web Services breaches. That's three stories in the last two weeks about massive amounts of customer data that is available to the public because of misconfigured Amazon Web Services S3 buckets. Yesterday, I read that the Dow Jones has become the latest organization to be affected by an Amazon Web Services cloud data leakage due to misconfiguration and user error. So in the last few weeks, there have been the Dow Jones with 2.2 million customers affected, the Republican National Committee, or RNC, with 198 million voter database records being exposed, Verizon had 14 million customer records exposed, and the WWE had 3 million customer data records exposed. That's a lot of customer data exposed, and it's simply because of misconfiguration of Amazon Web Services Simple Storage Solution Buckets, or S3 buckets. For those that aren't aware, AWS S3 buckets are the name that is given to a logical location that you can store your data within the Amazon Web Services cloud. Think of it as a virtual partition that you can use whenever you wish. The normal process that you take when you set up an S3 bucket is the following. First, you sign into the AWS Management Console. Then, you choose Create Bucket, give the bucket a unique name, and choose the region that you want the bucket to reside. Typically, you'll pick a region close to your location to improve latency. In other words, how long it takes to get, to get to the bucket. And then you choose Create. Simple, right? But do you notice something missing in that process? That's right. There isn't a required step to specify who can access that bucket. Amazon indicates that the bucket is set up by default as private. But all that means is that the bucket can be accessed by the permissions it inherits from the Amazon Web Services account that set up the bucket in the first place. So I looked into how to change permissions for a bucket, and what I found was, I'll admit, a little confusing to me. I like to think that I'm somewhat tech savvy, but when to change permissions on a bucket, I have to open a policy editor and then start doing a cut and paste of a policy template, I know it's complicated. By the way, the URL at the bottom of this image, that's the document that you have to go take a look at. If I was to configure the permissions for a Windows server, all I would have to do is right click on a folder, go to the security tab, and specify who could access that folder. It's a little more complicated for a Linux box, but it's still a simple command to specify the permissions of a folder. This, this is complicated. No wonder there are more and more misconfigured S3 buckets being exposed. Now, I was doing some research on Amazon data centers last week, and I was surprised to find out that, apparently, up to 70% of all internet traffic goes through an Amazon data center. You add in the massive market share that Amazon Web Services has in cloud services, AWS has roughly 40% of market share versus Google, Microsoft, IBM. And you can see there's a large risk coming with regards to the shift to the cloud. Don't get me wrong. I understand the reason for the shift. There are massive cost savings that come with moving from your own data center to one owned and managed by somebody else. But you have to start to include the cost of dealing with data exposures to that ROI. Plus, the more I look at the capabilities of Amazon Web Services from a security point of view, the more concerned I get with regards to the capabilities versus on-premise security devices. The security segmentation capabilities of AWS aren't anywhere near the capability of a true firewall. And these misconfigurations of buckets permissions, that's just something that is inexcusable. Have Amazon Web Service customers figured out the costs associated with having to actually train their people in proper configuration? If I was to advise Amazon Web Services, I'd recommend a few things. First, I'd simplify and align the management of the virtual instances to something similar to what a Microsoft server or a Linux box has. There's a reason why there are so few problems with them. They've evolved since the 1980s and the kinks have been worked out. 
By the way, the more complex a solution is, the higher the likelihood that a security breach will occur. My next recommendation is that there has to be a reason why I would go with the AWS security services rather than an on-premise security device in terms of capabilities. If the capabilities can't surpass what I currently have, including the knowledge that's been built up, why would I recommend going to your services from a security point of view? My third recommendation would be to set up your base configuration to as restrictive as possible and then make people make a conscious decision to open them up. Don't assume that people will know how to work with your solution. Assume they won't and will make mistakes. Okay, maybe I'm just an old school kind of guy. Maybe it's just an old dog having to learn new tricks. But evolution has a purpose. We build on things because it allows us to stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. Based on what I'm seeing and the research I've done on Amazon Web Services, I'm going to expect to see more and more of these data breaches. And that, as a result, will impact the use of Amazon Web Services more and more. But then, I guess that will involve evolution as Amazon Web Services adjusts to improve things. There must have been a time that Neanderthals were more dominant than Homo sapiens. Until Homo sapiens took over due to sheer volume of individuals. Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you like this video, and if you want to take a look at other videos, please take a look at our YouTube channel, or go to our website at ea.media and look at our video page. Hope that helps. I'm Neil Rarep, and I'm with EA Media.